Here's part two to the 55-year-old video recorder made by Sony, the VC2000. In part one, we got the thing working, but not working that well. This one, we're going to try and improve the picture and sound quality and see how far we get. Let's check it out. So we're back working on the beast today. As you can see, I'm recording right now. We have good video levels. We have good audio levels. So what I've done since the last uh, video was I've just been playing around with the alignment a bit. What I found was the the tape didn't appear to be uh, passing correctly over the head. I can see a lot of real estate on the top here, which is where the audio is laid down. So it got me to thinking maybe the tape was curling slightly over the guide and not passing over the audio head properly. So I've made some adjustments. I'm just doing a test recording now and we'll see if I've made any improvement to this recorder's sound. And then we'll dig into it a little deeper and see why it's not recording if we're still not getting any sound. So let's just take a look at the picture of the tape now. I've just been recording it here for a few minutes, so let's just rewind it and take a look at the playback and see how it's looking today as we start working on the unit for the second day. So as of today, that's what our picture looks like. This is our starting point getting a little bit of flicker at the bottom of the pitcher. That might be the guide on the left side of the drum not quite in the right position. As I say, this unit was messed with long before I got it, so I'm going to try and get this thing uh, delivering uh, as good a pitcher as I can and try and get that sound back. But other than that, it actually isn't performing that bad. Well, something I want to look at is the RF envelope off the video head. So this is the test point here. I'll show you the scope reading. So there's our playback. Looks like one head is a little lower than the other. So if you can see on the schematic that there's an adjustment for that. Try and get this camera to stay in focus on the scope. So I'm just looking to see if, and see if there's a, uh, an adjustment for the two heads. Because they look like they go through um, there's an A head preamp and a B head preamp. So therefore, there must be an adjustment. The levels should be about equal, but they're not. And that's probably because there, there's a level adjustment. You'll see on the schematic here that there's two separate paths. The A channel goes here and the B channel goes here. There's two separate preamps on this one. And they're just regular transistor preamps. So I'm just looking for the level adjustment as there will be. Looks like there's a 500 ohm uh, variable resistor which balances the two signals. It's called R, what is it here? RMT1, whatever that is. One of these controls here, as you can see if I can find it. And when I find the control, it should change the level relationship between the two heads. You should see it on the scope. There, that looks like the one there. That's the that's the head balance. And now, if I get that adjusted, I should be able to get that balance fairly fairly good. Looks like we've got a bit of a tape path alignment problem here on one of the guides. So let's just see if I can tweak this exit guide a little bit. 
and improve Keep in mind that it's still playing a recording that was made before it was tweaked. But when I move the guide, it does affect how the tape rides on uh, things like the audio head and uh, the other tape guides, which I'll, I'll show you here. Okay, just that one adjustment. That picture is almost perfect. In fact, that's probably as well as this thing has ever recorded. So I got a bit of fold over on the bottom of the tube, which I can deal with, but I got to deal with my sound. It seems to be fading in and out. But picture-wise, I think this thing is looking pretty darn good. At this point, I need to concentrate on the audio head, which is over here. The sound is recorded on the top edge of the tape and the control track on the bottom. And if you notice, if I, if I bring my magnetic screwdriver near the head you can hear some noise <clears throat> I'm thinking that the head is maybe not quite aligned properly maybe a little bit on the high side as I do see I do see some of the head material where it would record protruding above the tape As you can see there, if I move the tape down, I move the tape up. So it may be that the, the head is not making good contact with the tape, and that may be all that's wrong with it. I think I'm on the right track. I just did a quick recording, and I just kind of pressed the tape up against the head by hand. So we'll play it back. You'll hear it when I move the tape. His arms and, and actually his forearms and his were in the air. So it is recording. It's just the tape is not making good contact with the head. If we watch what happens to the, the tape as it's playing, I think it's just riding a little bit low. When I uh, moved the tape up slightly or pressed on it here, that's when I got the sound when it was recording. His arms and, and actually his forearms and we're up in the air. So I think that's where my problem is now. And you can see, this is the audio head here. It's, it's not fully covering the tape. You can see the whole gap there, right? It's not fully covering the tape. But I have a feeling it's just the way that the tape is, is being pulled over it, it's not making good contact. Put the unit in play. Let's take the uh, deck off, the, the cover off, so we can inspect the reel tables and check the back tension pad and so forth. So I'm going to remove these screws and the control cover and the uh, tape control lever because taking the screws out will not release the top. It's trapped. So I got to take out all the screws, take out the, the uh, actual lever that controls play, rewind, and fast forward. And then the top lifts off so we can inspect underneath the, uh, the reel tables, the mechanism. I want to check the brakes, back tension brake, basically. Every time it makes a rotation, I see um, the tape tension shift. Every rotation of the reel, so I've got to take off the um, pinch roller as well to get at that.
Okay, now I can now I can peer under the cover here and see why when it's uh, in play. Every time this thing makes a rotation, it seems to uh, stick. I see the tension band jump. So if I take a look and see what would be causing that. I don't see anything under here that's a uh, that, uh, problem. Maybe adjust the tension band slightly. So it's putting proper back tension on the tape. This tends to stick right here. I don't think that should stick. I think that might be a problem right there. The tension band is kind of sticking. I don't think it should be. I may be wrong, but I don't think this is supposed to kick all the way in like that because when it does, it gets behind this, this spring. I think it's probably supposed to be more like that so that that acts as the, the tension regulator spring pushing against here. So that would mean that this is bent a little bit. Uh, that's a little better. Now it puts tension, but when the tape tension goes up, it'll pull on here, which will release the tension. Let's just try that. Go back to stop, and of course it releases it completely. You see, so that might be that might be a problem. That lever was sticking. That's why I took this apart. Let's just uh, put it back together and see whether it uh, affects anything. Because if the tension's not right, we're not going to get good um, head to tape contact on the linear head, especially. And that could certainly give us some problems. Can you guys look at the top of this thing while it's apart. It's just like a real to real machine in that respect, right? Well, I've determined why I can't get any sound. It's the bloody tape. VHS tape is not the right tape when it's been re-spooled onto one of these. This is the sticky shed tape I just made a recording on. It's going to screech and stuff, but you'll hear we have sound. So, the thing does have sound. Uh, I wasted a bunch of time trying to figure out why it's not recording sound. It's the bloody tape not making the, the the I guess the the tape is a lot thinner that was wound onto this reel and um, under tension it either curls or slips or just does not make proper contact with the uh, the head there's our fault give you an idea how bad that tape is that is uh, what came off the tape and onto the machine after only a couple of minutes of play yeah that tape was shot I think what I'm going to have to do though, if I really want to see if this machine performs as it's supposed to, I'm going to have to try and track down a half inch tape. Even if it's a half inch audio tape, I'm sure that would work fine on a machine like this. Just a standard normal bias audio tape half inch. That would probably work because obviously VHS tape just doesn't work. It's just a little too thin. But I'll thread this garbage tape up one more time after cleaning it. I wound it through to the end and back. And maybe all the crap that's coming off the tape has come off of it and I might actually be able to use this. 
Uh, there was no video on them. There was audio, but it looks like whoever recorded this before uh, looks like maybe their uh, heads were clogged up on the machine. It appears to have been recorded at a school. I hear a lot of people, a lot of kids on there, and it sounds like it was probably a school that uh, had a machine like this. Could have even been this machine for that matter, because when I got the tape, it came with the machine. So I think this machine probably came from a school before before my friend got it that uh, gave it to me. And as I say, he uh, the, he said that one tape was was shot, and he he spooled a bunch of VHS tapes on here, and then proceeded to record crap off of the satellite dish, and then gave me the machine. But anyway. I've run this tape through the machine, I did a full pass, forward and reverse, cleaned the machine several times, and uh, it's not sticking at the moment. I'm just wondering if it's actually recording anything. So I've actually got a recording taking place right now, and we'll see if it actually records anything. Moment of truth. Now remember, we're probably not going to get much in the way of picture. It's probably going to have lots of noise in the picture because I'm sure this tape is still sticking. Do we get sound? I would say yes. And what my doctor said surprised me. We do get a picture. Actually, I'm surprised that this tape, considering all the crap that came off it when I put it through the first pass, I'm surprised this tape's actually working. Maybe this tape will work. Because um, it's playing. It's not playing great, but it's playing better than I, certainly better than I expected that it would play. Considering this tape is probably, uh, you know, 40, 50 years old. I don't know how old it is, but the machine itself is 55 years old, but I don't know how old that tape is. It could be it could be as old as the machine. Um, these machines, a lot of these machines found their way. We had one in the high school that I was in, junior high, we had one. Uh, a black and white machine. I think we had a color one as well. But we had, we had a couple of these Sony machines. Um, and a camera and everything, because I used to play around with it in the AV department. But uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's <laughs> it's actually working with this old tape. And sound has recorded on it. See, this is what was on the recording before. And as you see, there's no, uh, there's no video. So obviously, whoever recorded this, the heads were clogged up on the machine that they made the recording on because there's no video there and we can record on the tape and it works. But their sound, and the fact that they're playing music from prints, um, uh, it's a good indication that this tape was recorded on in the 80s, the last time this machine was probably used. As you can hear, just that little bit of play, we'll have uh, put a bunch of dirt on this machine. I'll have to clean it again. At least I know it records sound properly now on the right tape. And it's not a it's not a recording problem on the machine. It records sound. It records picture. And uh, this is probably all I'm going to get out of this with not having the right tape. But uh, we'll certainly uh, I'm going to clean it again. See here on the drum. It's left a bunch of dirt on the drum here, on the lower drum and upper drum, and uh, the tape guides here, and this one over here on the other side. Yeah, it's left. I mean, this is this one turned black before. So did this one. But I've only played the tape for what two minutes, two three minutes there. So that's what came off of it in that amount of time. And uh, we'll clean this up again. We'll just use some isopropanol and a Q-tip, carefully not touching the head. Clean this area here, and over here. the head out of the way. You don't want to touch the actual video head here with the Q-tip. would be a good way to break it. So just tap the power button just to get it out of the way. Yeah, there. That's just from running that tape for like a couple minutes. Yeah, these uh, these old tapes are pretty pretty bad. I might I might even try baking that one and see what happens. 
just for for the hell of it. We'll bake this thing and see if it uh, if we can get a little bit of life out of it. Now keep this in mind. This is a recording that I made when I first got this machine given to me on this VHS tape um, that was uh, spooled onto this. It did record sound at one time. Head clogged there. So it did record. The heads are clogging up here. Get those clean. It did record sound initially on this machine. But recordings made now don't work with sound. At least further down the tape they don't. Maybe at the beginning they do. And here's where I see the problem. You see the tape where it's going around the head? This is tension changing as it's uh, operating. And I think that's part of the problem is that this re-spooled tape, besides being the wrong formulation, is much thinner than the original tape. It's missing the audio head completely on record, but um, I think that's the, you know, the problem. What I'm doing right now is I'm the other tape, I've got it in my uh, convection oven and I'm baking it. We'll see whether I have any success making a, a short test recording on the other tape once it uh, finishes its baking. But uh, this is the say this is the tape that I was recording on, and I was getting good pictures off it, just very low sound. Unless I actually put my thumb up here and pushed on the tape on the on the audio head, then sound a little better. By the way, guys, um, the vertical problem on this was adjustable. I just adjusted out with the vertical height and the vertical linearity. Looks like the yoke may be a little bit crooked in this set. But. Uh, yeah, for a 55-year-old TV, it's actually doing pretty good. Fine-tuning control. Okay, just making a recording now. The tape has been baked. I baked it for 140 degrees for one hour. And I've let it cool down, and now we're just going to try making a recording on this tape and see what type of results I get. Rewinding the tape now. Don't hear any squeaking. That's a good sign. Will it actually play? I guess we'll find out pretty quick. Of course, this tape is not great. There was some damage to the tape there, but uh, as you can hear, I have sound. The unit's working, and I'm getting good levels of sound out of it. Notice that there's no tape curl when a real tape is run through it, because the tape is much, it's a much thicker uh, back, you know, the actual tape base itself is much heavier. Whereas the VHS tape is much thinner, and with the tension that this machine uh, provides, <laughs> it's actually stretching the tape. That's one of the reasons why it's not recording properly. So I think we're going to probably leave this at this point because this unit appears to be working okay, and it's the picture's not too bad considering the tape itself is completely shot. I think if I were able to find a new tape for this thing, this thing would probably record perfectly. As you can see on this old tape, picture's not the greatest, but we have sound and we have picture. I think that's all that can be expected out of such a, a bad tape. I think the heads might be starting to clog up a bit there. Okay, that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching.